can actually hear me. I'm looking at my thing and little the little microphone thing said that there's a signal and that you might be able to hear me. Good morning. It's noon. We'll start in just about a minute. It's noon where I am. Scandia, Minnesota. It is a dull. Well, Scandia is always kind of dull, but it's a dull overcast day. If you have any questions about the webinar, uh, when it's over, send me an email at pagenumber at gmail.com. It is spelled like it sounds. And we've already got our first question, and it comes from Chris Abrams, or Abrams, I guess, with Cumulus Media in Albuquerque. And his question is, so what's the deal with the proclaimers? Uh, Chris, I, I really don't know what to tell you. Uh, I, I just don't know. And let's begin. This past year, radio lost a really brilliant programmer named Bill Tanner. And a lot of people have mannerisms, Bill had Tannerisms. He espoused predictable unpredictability. He said that people like what they know and they know what they like. And one of the things that I picked up from him very, very early on was that he said that all of the ratings gimmickry and machinations in the world will never beat a radio station that has an emotional connection to its audience. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, great examples of that. I would say V103 in Atlanta would be one such example. Uh, WPGC in Washington for about 25 years, up until about 2010, was one of those stations. 102 Jams in Orlando. They had an emotional connection to the audience that was so interwoven into the DNA of the station and the market that to untangle it would have been like trying to untangle a ball of Christmas lights, which <laughs> they eventually did. Uh, Tanner was talking about how stations, great stations evoke emotion. They're real and they're there in the moment. And emotion doesn't have to be, you know, sad or grim. Emotion can be joy. If your team, you know, wins a World Series for the first time since Buchanan was president and everybody is out there dancing in the streets, well, you should probably be out there dancing in the streets too. But even more so, you should probably have been leading the charge to begin with. I've always referred to radio as kind of spanky from our gang. Spanky was the person who would throw a party in the barn. <clears throat> he was the organizer. He would uh, do something to save Miss Crabtree's job. So uh, evoking emotion is good and being in the moment is good. And the next opportunity for that is gonna be the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, it is going to be omnipresent. It is going to be everywhere. So you need to acknowledge it. And there are a lot of ways to acknowledge it. And I'll try to present those to you. Uh, to miss it doesn't speak really highly for the relevance of our medium. Um, we should play to our strength, you know? we can do things that Sirius and Spotify can't do. So look at your station and in your market, because every station and every market is different. A cookie cutter approach to 9-11, well, it's better than missing it, but you know, look at what your situation is and then choose an approach. And then we'll go like this. Hmm. Not to be all Zen about this, but, uh, Everybody was somewhere. And this is one of those moments that everybody can tell you or recall what was going on. Uh, it was very similar to me. My first experience like an event like that would have been John Lennon and returning to my dorm and people were in the lobby crying. For my older brothers, it would have been the PA announcement when they were in elementary school that JFK had been killed. For my father, it would have been Pearl Harbor. Um, great radio stations are forums. Radio was the first social media. So maybe as your way to acknowledge the anniversary, we have people tell us where they were, you know? Uh, radio stations fail sometimes at allowing the audience to, to share their, their voice. Uh, it's funny as you have these, you have some morning shows that try to be funny and they aren't, when often the listeners will have great funny stories. So use that. I mean, people are going to want to share. Social media would be an obvious platform for doing that from Saturday the 11th. 
Uh, if you can get audio from your listeners talking about where they were and what they were doing, weave it into some imaging for that day. And don't forget that a lot of people were traveling. I've lined up for uh, my stations an interview with a guy who was a flight attendant. He'd started the morning in Flint, Michigan. They were in Jacksonville boarding for a flight to Atlanta when they found out what had happened. So he's going to be doing some interviews. A friend from high school was a flight attendant that morning. She was the lead flight attendant on a flight from New York to Minneapolis and got summoned to the cockpit somewhere over Lake Michigan. And she said that the pilots looked tense. And she said, that's, that's never good. And they told her that they were going to land in Green Bay and the term was very quickly. So if you can line up a flight attendant, perhaps for the day before on September 10th, that would be great. That's Carl. Everybody knows Carl. Uh, he, he was uh, pulled out of school right before graduation because of drugs. And uh, I think he had at least 10 majors in college, including French. And then he decided that he was gonna try law. And who doesn't you know, make that kind of decision? What the heck, I'll try law school and something clicked and he became a very successful wall street lawyer so for the first anniversary of 9 11 uh, cities 97 in minneapolis was looking for somebody with a local connection and i said well i've got carl and he called in and talked about that morning about how it was crystal clear he, he referred to it as that perfect fall morning in new york city and he was feeding his daughter ingrid breakfast in her high chair, turned and looked out and saw the first plane hit. So if you can find somebody and go back and look at the news you know, cycle after 9-11, if you can find somebody from your market, maybe who had was in New York or in Washington, D.C. on business, or they had grown up in your city and had moved there for work, if you can find a good local angle, that would be fantastic. It might be something that you would have to solicit for. But, you know, society has the attention span of a golden retriever. And memories can be diluted. So refreshing these memories and reminding people of really the impact of what had happened that day and what it did to our country it's not a bad thing. And that could be one way for you to, again, acknowledge if you can find some people from your market. Patriotism doesn't just have to be for the 4th of July. Uh, and after 9-11, there was a resurgence of patriotism in our country. KDWB in Minneapolis, within 72 hours, was able to organize a human flag. Jeff and Jerry in San Diego, CBS in Orlando, they've all done human flags for the 4th of July. This falls though into what your comfort level is, okay? In September of 2021, what is your comfort level with having three or 400 people together on a football field? It's actually a very easy thing to put together. You get red, white, and blue placards, you lay them out in a grid, you have your volunteers, your listeners, and this is a great thing you can do to get your listeners participating in something that you're doing. And that's, that's always an amazing experience. So you bring them in in lines, so the grid is filled, on cue they take the placard, they hold it over their head, and using a drone or perhaps a helicopter from your TV partner, you get the aerial shot. The aerial shot is the payoff for the human flag. Um, if you have not done one, or if there's not been one that's been done in your market, it's pretty, it's pretty spectacular. It's a great visual. If you wanted to do something that was more than just a hashtag, the impact of the numbers is pretty dramatic. 2,977 people died. That's just a number. But if there's a way that you can present the number, then it's real. It's uh, very similar to the Vietnam Memorial. You can talk about 58,000 people dying in Vietnam, but until you see the names, it's, it's not tangible, I guess. Um, the domestic abuse campaign has always been the empty shoes, which is a presentation or display 
of pairs of shoes in a plaza or in a park, each pair of shoes representing a local victim of domestic abuse or domestic violence. Uh, with COVID, the Arizona Cardinals at their uh, practice facility this past spring went out and put little American flags, just the, the, the small ones that you would hold in your hand and you would wave at a parade, but they filled a, a green space adjacent to their practice facility with these. And each flag represented somebody who in that community had lost their life to COVID. Uh, I saw that done at a hospital in Orlando this spring. So that could be something that you would do. Um, virtual is good, actually live out in the community, that's just as good. Guests in Salt Lake City for the first anniversary did something called the Field of Flags, where they got something like, back then, I believe the number was established at 3,214, and it's been dialed back and they've you know, redone the numbers, but they got 3,214 uh, six-foot flags and they planted them in a field. And you could get out and walk through them and literally become lost in the flags. It's a very visceral experience. Wild in San Francisco did that with luminaries, where they filled a, a beach or covered a beach with luminaries, the, black, the bags that have the sand and the candles. And with the help of listeners, they kept them going for, I believe, 48 hours. Again, it's a fantastic visual. Pepperdine University does it every year on the hill that's below the university, but above Pacific Coast Highway. And Thousands of people will drive by and stop and go out and take photos with it. Right now, there is a station that is working with the VFW or a VFW in their market, and they are working to collect 2,977 six foot flags. So the VFW is very excited, very interested in helping to make this a reality. So the impact of numbers uh, cannot be understated. The impact of names, now this is gonna fall into your comfort level, whether you feel comfortable with presenting names, but with one of the stations, they were able to do a scroll. So it was on their site on September 11th, on one of the anniversaries, it was just a never ending scroll of names. They just went on and on and on. And every one of these people had lost their life. Every one of these people had a story, Every one of these people had a family. So if there is a way that you can present the names. Now, I'm of the age where when I was in elementary school, you wore a bracelet. You got a bracelet that had the name of a Vietnam POW or missing in action on it. And you were supposed to wear the bracelet until uh, he was repatriated or his MIA case was closed. One of the stations is looking at doing that digitally with trees where they're gonna have 2,977 trees on a page and each tree will have a name on it. And you can take one of these trees and make that person, that tree, your profile photo for the day. Military and vets. We are a deeply divided country right now. I have the one, five, 10 and 25 theory of uh, complaints. You can do anything anything and get a complaint. If you get five complaints, yeah, well, people like to complain. If you get 10 complaints, you're going to go, well, you know, maybe next time we'll do it differently. If you get 25 complaints, well, it wasn't my idea, it was Eddie's idea and I strongly advised him not to do it. You should talk to him about it. I had no involvement in this idea at all. Honoring veterans, on 9-11 would get you your one complaint, that person who would complain about anything. It would be one way to acknowledge the anniversary. I just saw that with a 100-year-old veteran, 100-year-old man, and his community did a parade for him. And he stood, stood in his lawn and saluted as hundreds and hundreds of cars drove by and honked their horns and honored him. So that's something that is right now in the works at one of the stations. It's kind of a spin or a play on what some stations did early in COVID when senior citizens were 
confined to long-term care facilities or their own homes and probably were feeling a little forgotten, stations organized do-it-yourself parades of listeners' cars. It was early in COVID, people were being very cautious, but you could stay in your car. So with cars and with uh, appliance vehicles, they did a parade through the market and wound past all of these uh, elderly care facilities. And the residents could come to the windows, wave, and know that they were not forgotten. What they're planning on doing is doing that with veterans and soliciting names of veterans and doing a do-it-yourself parade around the homes of veterans. Uh, another thing that stations have done for 4th of July, and they do it a lot for Christmas, is get messages and weave them into imaging. Hey, this is Paige. I want to send a, you know, a Christmas greeting to my sibling who's stationed in South Korea or something like that. But military, <coughs> excuse me, military and vets uh, could be your, your acknowledgement for 9-11. One of the things that we embraced following 9-11 were first responders. We suddenly were reminded of how important these people are in our lives. And what's been going on during COVID is that we've been doing that with frontline heroes, the people who have kept that kept it going during the pandemic. Uh, and heroes come in all shapes and sizes. The station in Knoxville did pint-sized heroes, and it was sponsored by Baskin Robbins. And they were looking for kids who had stepped it up and really helped out with volunteering or whatever participation during the pandemic. So maybe for 9-11, the second or 20th anniversary, we do that with uh, first responders again. San Francisco, now in San Francisco, when Sandy Hook occurred, did something they called Operation Teddy Bear. And they collected teddy bears for first responders because they carry them with them in their vehicles for when they go to incidents or accidents or other situations where children were there, were involved, were witnesses. And the station did a candlelight skate at Justin Herman Plaza and people came down and donated teddy bears. Operation Teddy Bear was fantastic. Uh, one of the stations is going to, in the month of September, starting on September 10th, go out and every day, every weekday, go to a fire station in their market and in the surrounding communities and deliver lunch, and but also invite the people from the neighborhood to come down and you know meet their their guardians, you know face to face. It's kind of like a version of National Night Out. Bells and silence. I had arrived in San Francisco for the first anniversary, just before the first anniversary of the Loma Prieta earthquake. And what we did was we went out to this place called the Cypress Structure uh, because we wanted to be live somewhere at 5:04 p.m. The Cypress structure was an on-ramp to an elevated freeway that had pancaked and had been in the previous year torn down and, and trucked off. So the Cypress structure was this on-ramp to nowhere. It looked like a water ski jump. So we went out there and using Marty, a Marty, we broadcast what was happening. And it was just this un unbelievably, unbelievably emotional moment when you heard a city of, or a market of four million people go quiet. And then you began to hear, hear the church bells. This would be something that you could do at uh, 8.46 on Saturday morning, September 11th. If you're in a market that's smaller, it would probably be easier to organize, but it's as difficult as reaching out via email to churches and asking them to ring their bells. For the first anniversary of, uh, or for the first week anniversary of the 35W bridge collapse, KDWB in Minneapolis went out to the site where the, uh, the bridge was and people were gathering to remember. And <clears throat> they broadcast it live. And I remember I got into an argument with the program director about you know, broadcasting a moment of silence. Well, a moment of silence in the studio is dead air. A moment of silence out at an event is chilling and they did it and it, it was it was very very strong so that could be something that would be your acknowledgement now where would you do it um one place you could talk about doing it is in a lot of markets they've got girders 
from the World Trade Center that were donated to communities and have been turned into memorials. Uh, I was taking my daughter on a ski trip up to northern Minnesota in this little town, Rockville, Minnesota. There's a 9-11 memorial with girders. I looked it up. There's like five girders in different locations around the Phoenix market. So if you have one of these uh, relics in your market, that would be a place that you could go. Power 96 in Miami went out and they went to a plaza in downtown Miami on the first anniversary and they got one of those fire bells and it's in a cradle and they rang it 3,214 times. And with each ring, a volunteer read a name. It wasn't on the air, but they did check-ins with that. Uh, but it was on a speaker. And throughout downtown Miami, you could hear the ringing. When you hear th the bell ring 3,214 times, it is a reminder of the enormity of what happened on 9-11. The other thing is it allows the audience to participate. Imaging and graphics. I call it Googleizing. Google is uh, pretty good at changing their graphic uh, for you know the inventor of croquet. It's his birthday. Great, they'll change the graphic. Radio should be able to do that, and it's a very simple way to acknowledge something like 9/11. Um, we should be able to do it for Halloween. We should be able to do it for Christmas. We should be able to do it like here for the Fourth of July. Uh, after, after Sandy Hook, a lot of the stations uh, put up these kind of images and they scrubbed, they cleaned the site and replaced it with an image like this. It's again, you know, for one day, it's, it's not the end of the world. Honestly, you'll probably get more views and shares than if uh, you just left it the way it always is. Um, imaging, imaging is great. Imaging can be respectful. Uh, Hail You See in Las Vegas, though, took it to the next level. They got a song called Heaven by DJ Sammy. And the program director, Kat Thomas, used his daughter as an actress to read a story about a girl whose father went off to work and didn't come home. Uh, the song was the number one request on the station, if we care about that stuff. Uh, but really what happened, it, it spread. It got airplay in Namibia. You got airplane in Romania, Japan. We're a music medium. It would only seem to make sense that we use music to acknowledge 9-11. Rebranding. My little town, like a lot of little towns, the town park is named after a local kid who went off to war and didn't come back. This would be going back to if there is a local angle. For instance, in Denver, uh, one of the pilots of Flight 93 was from Littleton. In uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, one of the flight attendants was from a little town nearby. In San Diego, the youngest victim of Flight 93 was uh, in college in Northern California, but was from San Diego. So what her school, La Jolla Country Day School did, was rename a flagpole after her. If there is a good, local story, a good local connection, and working with their families, this would be something that would be pretty amazing to pull off. The radio stations come and go, uh, and people <laughs> don't remember us. We're just this music thing that changed formats. Great radio stations have legacies. This would be an amazing legacy. And then finally, volunteering. After 9-11, Americans came together like we had not done in a very long time, and we certainly aren't right now. Uh, nothing would exemplify the American spirit more than using the anniversary of 9-11, which is a Saturday, so people won't be working, to do volunteer work. Uh, Q102 in Philadelphia, 95.7 Jams in Birmingham have done these as monthly events. They called it in Birmingham Jams Corps. They weren't asking for people's money they're asking for their time. And every month they would go out to a community center or to a playground or to a park and they would clean and they would pick up, but it was working with the audience. They had activated the audience. You can never beat a radio station that activates the audience. Um, 
And you'll see some businesses, some companies where service days are part of what they do. Keller Williams does that, where their offices will take a day off every year and go out. And in the case of my in-laws, mowed their lawn and thatched the lawn, did, did yard work for them. And they were all having a good time. They were really enjoying that moment together. The Mall of America does something every year called Volunteer Day, where every nonprofit, not every, but dozens and dozens of nonprofits will have booth space there. And so if you are inclined to stop eating a couch potato and actually go out and do something, you can go to the Mall of America and walk the booths and try to find somebody who is a good fit. So Theater De June Loon is looking for somebody with carpentry skills to help build sets. Well, I flunked out of shop. That might not be the fit for me, but here's somebody who's looking for uh, volunteers to, to coach youth hockey. Okay, I could do that. In the terms of Alcoholics Anonymous, you would be an enabler. You would be helping facilitate people getting involved, which they, on their own they might not be able to do. And what better way is there to honor the memories of all of these people? Um, if I was at a radio station and I was planning for 9-11, 2021, this might be the thing that I would do, uh, just because I've seen how amazing it is when you can activate the audience to do this kind of stuff. Um, it's not negative, it's positive, it's not political. Um, this would be what I would do, and I'd back it up with a web graphic, some imaging, and then undoubtedly on September 10th, I would do some interviews on the morning show. And that's, that's my webinar. I uh, didn't want to take up too much of your time, but throw some opportunities or options at you, because we really can't miss this. And there's so many things that you can do that would be simple, and there's so many things that you could do that would be very involved, but um, it's what radio does best. I remember after Katrina, the stations I work with sent 118 semi-trucks full of water to Texas and to Louisiana. It was real tangible. It wasn't, you know, text to code to the Red Cross. It was come down and join us. We're going to fill these trucks and the DJs are going to drive them to the disaster area. And after it was over, I heard from a lot of programmers who were just amazed. They didn't know that we could do this. They didn't know that we could be more than just, you know, battle of the sexes on the morning show, as exciting as that is. So thank you for sitting through this. If you have any questions, email me at pageneenauer at gmail.com, P-A-I-G-E-N-I-E-N-A-B-E-R at gmail. And I thank you. And uh, I also have some resources. I have some audio resources. If you're interested in hearing them, I can share those with you. And I can also, if you'd like, uh, share the information of the flight attendant, this guy who's going to be doing interviews. So thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a good rest of the day.